The story I'm gonna tell you, you're not gonna believe. But every word of it is true. I know because it happened to me. But enough about me. We really don't have time for that. And by we, I mean me. Detective Schwartz. Hotel Detective. It was Friday night in the big city. And on a Friday night, you'll find me making my rounds at the Lakeview Hotel, a two-bit armpit on the upside of downtown. Any time before midnight, that is. After midnight, you'll catch me drowning my proverbial sorrows at the five-star dive bar in the lobby of that hotel. But at ten minutes to midnight, I'm always here in my office, watching the clock. Not that I'm a proverbial stickler for whatever punctual people stickle for. And not that I couldn't use the overtime, but my employer had made it clear that anyone who did use the overtime would be spending all their overtime reading resumes of hopeful applicants to the department. You see, the hotel had been wallowing in red ink for quite some time now, and it was likely to continue bleeding proverbial money until it stopped bleeding potential guests, and I only wish that was a metaphor. The Lakeview Hotel had the highest mortality rate of any luxury accommodations west of L.A. Or east of L.A. Or in L.A. In fact, as a hotel detective, I personally investigated six unsolved murders in the last five weeks and committed four. So the management wasn't entirely happy with my proverbial job performance. So that's why they told me anyone who clocked even one minute of unauthorized overtime would be out of a proverbial job. Literally. And by anyone, they meant me. Detective Schwartz. Hotel Detective. And that's why, at ten minutes to midnight, I had my proverbial eyes glued to the literal clock. Because when that strikes twelve, my Friday night nightmares become someone else's Saturday morning problems. So, if my luck holds true... Detective Schwartz, I need your help. Lady Luck. I need your help! You could set your watch by her. I'm afraid I'm not the man you're looking for. You're not Detective Schwartz? No. I'm not helpful. But you are the hotel detective! For nine more minutes I am. But there's gonna be a tenth. So I'm afraid if it's anything more time consuming than a stuck pickle jar, I'm gonna have to refer you to the day shift. But you have to help me! I'm the victim of a crime! Well, unless that crime is unnecessary wetness, there's not much I can do in all the time allotted. It's not unnecessary wetness. Are you sure? Because I got a blow dryer on the desk. Detective, please, you can't just turn your back on me. Oh, not in that outfit, no. Then you'll help me? For eight no. more minutes, I will. But that's all the time you've got. Will that be enough? Depends on the crime. What's yours? I think we call it... Uh huh. And you say you're the victim? Yes, it happened just now up in my hotel room. You know what murder is, right? It's the one where somebody could kill someone, right? That's the one. Yay. I'm gonna take your case, but I'm also gonna set down this little airplane timer here. Yeah. When the propeller strikes 12, Case dismissed! Is that understood? Oh, Detective, I can't tell you how grateful I am. Coming here in that robe was thanks enough. Now, if you'll come with me, I need to make a phone call. Wait, aren't you going up to my hotel room to examine the scene of the crime? <laughs> Ordinarily I would, but tonight I don't have the time. Hmm. Hello, room service? Yes. Bring me up the honeymoon special. What are you doing? Ordering room service. Will that speed up our investigation at all? No. Then why are you doing it? Because no man in his right mind would be alone in the same room as a woman in a robe like that with at least a bottle of champagne and half a dozen oysters, please. And a box of condoms. Oh, Detective, how will I ever thank you? That's what the condoms are for. Detective, I'm a married woman! You can never repay me.
So tell me about this murder, and uh, make it quick. With any luck, I'll be able to attend officers and make her son's bar mitzvah in the morning. Well, I was up in my room taking a shower before dinner. You had not eaten? No, but those oysters sound delicious. And the murder took place in the bathroom? No, it was in the bedroom. After your shower? No, during. So you were shot in the shower by someone in the bedroom. What makes you think I was shot? Because if it was a stabbing, you would have been in the same room as the killer. My god, you think you took the shower with me? No, I think you were shot. But I was shot. Look. Or stabbed for that matter. But it looks like you've had a close shave of some kind. No, it's waxing. Well, uh, since you haven't been harmed... Have you ever been waxed? And what makes you think you were murdered? Oh, I wasn't murdered. But you said you were. I said I was the victim of a crime. And the crime was murder! Well done, detective. With your keen eyes for detail, we'll have this case sewed up in no time. And if the crime was murder and you're the victim, why are you here? Well, I had to report it, didn't I? He's my husband, after all. The killer? No, the killer E. Murder victim is your husband? Yes, he was shot in my room, in the head, on the bed. So you're the victim by marriage. And this was supposed to be our honeymoon. I see, and is uh, that how you were dressed when you discovered the body? Yes, I had just stepped into the shower as a new detective. Can you imagine? When I heard what sounded like a gunshot, a blood curdling scream. Naturally, I finished my shower. And I put on some makeup, and then I raced into the bedroom right away to see what was the matter. That's when I found him, dead on the bed with a slug in his head. Were there any signs of forced entry? Well, he had been dropping hints all week, so I was kind of hoping. And I mean, it was our honeymoon after all. No, I mean, to the room. Oh. No, everything seemed to be in order, except for the horrible dead guy. You mean your husband? Yes, his name was Guy. And he was horrible. Oh yes, brains everywhere. Well, Mrs. Guy, this would normally be the time in the investigation where I would rush up to your hotel room to investigate the body. But, since we're short on time, let's just cut to the proverbial chase. Room service! That is your killer. Oh my, but how could you possibly have known that? Was your husband clinically insane? No, not clinically. And that's how I know. I don't understand. Ah, uh, there's no time to explain. Ooh, actually, there's four minutes. Allow me to explain. If there were no signs of forced entry, then your husband must have let the killer into the room himself which means the murderer must have been someone your husband knew personally or expected shortly. Someone like a bellhop. But why would he be expecting a bellhop? Because your husband was not clinically insane. And since no man in his right mind would ever be alone in the same room with a woman in a bathrobe with at least half a bottle of champagne and half a dozen oysters on the way, he ordered room service. And as you've already seen by now, the uh, service in this hotel is incredibly prompt. Yes, I'm impressed we got to give him a big tip. So your husband's order must have arrived at the room while you were still in the shower. Which means your husband must have been murdered by the night shift bellhop. He came into your room under the pretense of delivering a romantic appetizer. Then, after he killed your husband in cold blood, he disposed of the evidence, the oysters and champagne, something only a hotel staff member would do. That confirms his guilt. But I don't understand why this bellhop would want to murder my husband. Because unbeknownst to your late husband, this bellhop was having an extramarital affair with his wife! You're married?! No, you! He was having an affair with you! Because you still haven't asked me the one question that any widow in her right mind would have asked in this situation. 
why would the bellhop want to kill your husband? But I did ask! Oh, right. Well, never mind. Hmm. Have you been listening to anything I've been saying? Damn it, woman! You're wearing nothing but a bathrobe. That's no reason to accuse me of being an adulteress, or worse yet, an accomplice to murder. You're right. I'm sorry. Accepted. Shame about the bellhop boy, though. Yeah. Listen, my boss will have my proverbial head if he uh, finds out I shot another uh, innocent bystander. Do you think we could just agree that this was self-inflicted? Of course. He did look suicidal as soon as he walked into here. Aha! Oh! A likely story! But it's your story! Yes, it is. But that widow in her right mind would never agree to cover up the murder of a man who had nothing to do with her husband's murder unless he, in fact, had everything to do with the murder and she was in on it! But that could only mean two things. No, it could only mean one thing. I think you're leaving out a possibility, Detective. What's that? That the widow was not, in fact, in her right mind. Hmm. Well, this is embarrassing for both of us. But it looks like I was wrong again. And my shift is almost over. So I guess you're free to go. Oh, thank you, Detective. You don't know what a relief this is. You may not have sold my husband's murder, but knowing I'm innocent of all charges is a huge relief off my mind. Well, what little there is left of it. <laughs> um, how could I possibly ever thank you? Well, we've got vodka and oysters, and I'm off in two minutes. Oh, Detective, I think we can get you out much sooner. Well, uh, I didn't see that one coming. Neither did I. You're alive! But that's impossible! Actually, no, Detective. You're just a terrible shot. Ah, uh, yeah. Sorry about that. Forget it, Schwartz. She used us. We're all victims here. Well, actually, not me. No, I, I suppose not. But, but if you give me a minute, I can correct that oversight. Or would you look at the time? Gotcha now, detective. But why would you want to kill me? I haven't done anything to you! Besides so shoot you a minute ago? You're forgetting that I too might not be in my right mind. Oh no, I, I figured that when you murdered two people at your place of work. What was that? Your luck running out! It was a Saturday morning in the big city. And on a Saturday morning, my proverbial work here is done. Literally. stands on golden sand